Hello all, welcome to part 21 of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. In this video, we will look at database support in Metasploit. So this course and video series is part of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. And for more information, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Our certifications are currently taken by students from over 30 plus countries around the world. And this video is provided free of charge to all community members of Security Tube as part of our vision to provide quality yet free infosec education for one and all. Okay. So why database support? Now, if you look at a typical penetration test, right, it would involve hundreds of hosts, different operating systems, and at times even multiple locations. Now, this is a problem which actually has a multiplicative complexity. What do I mean by that? Well, you have hundreds of hosts, and each of these could have dozens of services which may be enabled, and one or more of those services could have vulnerabilities. So if you look at this purely from a data management perspective, that's a huge amount of data uh, for you to probably try and tabulate yourself. And this is where the database support comes in. Not only does not help in better organization, it also helps in speeding up things while you use the framework. So by default, if you're using Backtrack, PostgreSQL support is already uh, inbuilt so that you do not have to do anything. It's almost plug and play. So how do we go about this? Now, a very important concept is workspaces. So the first thing you want to do is create a workspace under which you would go ahead and store various data about the different penetration tests which you are conducting. Now, workspaces are logical units of information. This could actually mean it's all data pertaining to a single penetration test, or maybe even it's the same pen test, but probably each workspace is a different location, right? However, you may logically choose uh, to go ahead and create this boundary for a workspace is totally up to you. Now, the best part is it is extremely easy to import and export data out of workspaces and tables inside them. Now, inside a workspace, uh, some of the more important tables which are available to you are hosts, services, and vulnerabilities. The host table is used to store uh, the different IP addresses and information about them such as the operating system they are running, so on and so forth. Services pertains to individual port numbers and services running on the hosts, which are there in the host table. And finally, vulnerabilities are vulnerabilities you uncover while going ahead and penetration testing with Metasploit. Now, let's actually look at all of this to understand this better. Now, when you start Metasploit, what you would notice is there are a bunch of commands called database commands, right? The database backend commands. This is what you would actually use when you want to go ahead and use the database part of Metasploit. Now, by default, which was we are on backtrack, if you just do a quick DB driver, you would notice that the available driver is PostgreSQL for the PostgreSQL database and it is also the active one. So the first thing, as I said right now, that we have database connectivity in Metasploit is to explore the available workspaces. Now to do that, just run the workspace command and you would notice that you have a default workspace which you can use. So if you want to create a new workspace, 
we would go ahead and use the hyphen a option so let's say workspace hyphen a and let's call it smfe right this creates a workspace called smfe and it automatically changes your context to the smfe workspace by default now you can actually go ahead and switch workspace as well by mentioning the name of the workspace you want to be in so let's say workspace default and now if you run workspace without arguments you would notice that we are now using the default workspace so let's go back and switch to smfe now inside a workspace there are multiple uh, tables available as i said the important ones are hosts services and vulnerabilities right which currently has nothing in it there are other as well such as nodes etc uh, which probably are not too significant uh, but are used from time to time as well let's concentrate on these core tables for this video now one of the important things is that you can actually go ahead and add hosts manually so let me go ahead if i do a hyphen h this will actually give me an option to add hosts manually inside the table so let's say i want to add a new host and i just mention the ip address of the host so let's say 199 is what i have added right now if i list the host table you would notice that an address has been added though other quantities have not yet been populated right these are the other columns which is the mac address the name in the windows domain the os name os flavor os service pack if that is available and a bunch of other bookkeeping stuff now similarly we could actually go ahead and add a service entry so let's say services I want to add a new one and I say the protocol is TCP, the port number is 22 and the name of the service is SSH, right? You can look at all of these options here and this is something which you could go ahead and add and then you could specifically even mention an IP address on which the service has been located, let's say 199, oops. It's hyphen R for proto, not hyphen T. Right? And now if I go ahead and hit services, you would actually notice that we have added a service for a particular host on a particular port. By default, the state is open. Now, as you can see, this is of limited use to us at this point. So let's try and do an actual scan and import data into this table. Now to do that, one of the plugins which is already available to you is the Nmap plugin. Now what is a plugin? We'll discuss plugins in more detail in the next video. But basically a plugin allows you to extend the functionality of the framework by trying to coordinate and use data from other programs. As an example, nmap is not really part of the framework, but by using db underscore nmap, we can run nmap from the context of Metasploit and import the results of the scan directly into our workspace. So how would you do that? So I'm going to run db nmap. Let's not worry about DNS resolution. Let's do a service fingerprinting. And let me mention an IP address, which is that of my victim, which is 1.150, right? Let's run the scan. 1.150 is the Windows machine, which is here. And if you notice, this is typically the output Nmap would have given you, even if you had run in isolation. But now when you do hosts, you would actually notice that a new host name 1.150 has been added with a MAC address and a couple of other information which is available. Similarly, you have under services for the same IP but for different ports, 
you now actually have different service names like MSRPC, NetBIOS, SSN, etc. All of them being added with some more info about this, right? So this is how we are able to populate the table using the database. Now, let's say you want to go ahead and exploit this system, right? So let's go ahead and probably search for the net API exploit, which we are interested in. And then I'll show you how the vulnerabilities table is automatically populated by Metasploit. This always is a killer. Ugh. There you go. So let's go ahead and use this exploit. Right, let's look at the different options. And we actually see that the remote port is 445 and we need to set a remote host. Now, one of the things which we can do is we can hit services and what we basically want is all IP addresses for which port 445 is open. Uh, we want to test for this vulnerability against them, right? So if you actually do a services with the hyphen H option, what you would notice is that for a given search, so let's say if I want to just do a search and the port I'm interested is in 445, right? you would notice that the output of this search is the IP address, sorry, is the whole column or the whole row which defines the host 1.150, the port and all of that. Now, what I really want is to set our hosts with all the IP addresses for which port 445 is open, right? So that maybe I run a mass nmap scan and then I want to do a mass checking of all the remote systems and check if they are vulnerable to the net API exploit, which is MS0867. To do that, what I do is I go ahead and add an extra option, which is hyphen R. Now, the moment you do that, the output IP addresses are automatically fed inside our hosts, which is what you can see right now. Now, if I do a show options for this module, uh, you would actually notice that our hosts has been set if we hit exploit, right, uh, the R host, because it's an individual one, needs to be set. So let's go ahead and just set R host 192.168.150. Because this cannot take a range of addresses, this can only take an individual one. Then you can hit an exploit. For vulnerabilities or so for modules which can take a whole range our host setting uh, is something you can do and they can use it directly for example if you want to use one of the auxiliary modules right so we tried to do the exploit but unfortunately no session was created which means either it is not vulnerable or something else is ms now if i go back here and I want to go ahead and look at something else. So let's say we have the host table, but now I want to go ahead and export all of this data out, right? So before that, the first thing I can do is ensure that the database is up and running, which is true. And then I can try and export it. Now, when you want to export it, uh, you have two options. One is in XML format and the other is PW dump. Now, XML is probably more universal. And let's say we call it smfe.xml. Right? So it looks like everything has been loaded. And now if I go ahead and look at smfe.xml, you would actually find that all the info which we had in here, which is port 445, blah, 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 everything seems to be loaded, right? Now, what we need to do here 
is to understand that this XML file can also be imported right and the interesting thing really is that there are other formats through which the importing can happen as well so other file types which are included are all of these and this basically is different uh, port scanners, different vulnerability scanners whose data can be imported inside of the Metasploit database. Now what we are going to do right now is in the next video probably look at one of the plugins, enable it and then go ahead and play with that to see what else we can do by incorporating third party components and using them from within Metasploit. So that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments behind. Thank you very much.